watching the participant list and it's not growing yet. Welcome to the Virtual College Exploration for All Missouri Students, sponsored by the Missouri Association for College Admission Counseling and StriveScan. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenter at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule at moacac.org. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at that same website, moacac.org. And now I'll turn it over to our presenter. Awesome, thank you so much. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining to learn a little bit more about Belmont University. Let me go ahead and get this thrown up for y'all. Um, like you just heard, of course, please feel free to ask any questions that you can think of within the chat, the Q&A function. I'll try to keep my eye on that as we're going through the presentation this evening. Want to be sure to, of course, answer any questions that y'all may have. My name is John Paul Murray, and I'm an Assistant Director of Admissions at Belmont University, located in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm a Belmont graduate myself, graduated in 2014 with my degree in political science, and was also a part of our honors program. Uh, this is my seventh year in college admissions and sixth working at Belmont with Missouri students and excited to get to know y'all and, of course, help you as you're going throughout the admissions process. Uh, the way that I'll format this for y'all tonight is we'll kind of start off big, talking about numbers, then we'll talk a little bit about different facets of life at Belmont, and then we'll wrap up by going through the admission, scholarship, and financial aid process, and of course, seeing any questions that y'all have for me as well. So let's start off big. Again, then we'll kind of work our way down from there. We are a medium-sized institution, just over 8,200 students total, with about 6,800 of those being undergraduate students. And now we think this is a great size to be at. We are small enough that you are really able to be in community discussion-based courses where you're able to connect with your professors and connect with other students. Average class size for us is about 19. So again, we really want to make sure that you are able to have that deeper connection from an academic standpoint inside of the classroom, like you're going to find with many other truly liberal arts institutions. Um, at the same time, we are large enough to have new resources, new academic programs, new buildings that are opening all the time. So it's this nice mix of small and big, uh, kind of getting again to that medium size. Now our student body does come from all over the country. Our incoming freshman class this year, just a little under 70% of those were from outside of the state of Tennessee. About half of our student body is from 500 miles or more away from the Nashville area. Here on the screen, you'll see a breakdown of where our students are coming from. Our incoming freshman class this year was about 1,600 students, just to give you some reference as you're looking at these numbers. You'll see this year we had 46 students from Missouri that joined us at Belmont. Really a nice mix kind of, of all over the state. And I'd say probably about a third of those were from St. Louis. About a third of them were from the Kansas City area. Handful from Southeast Missouri, from Springfield, from all over the state. Uh, of course, depending on where you're at within Missouri, you may be as close as three hours away from Nashville. You may be as far away as 10 hours away from Nashville, but a really, really good distance for a lot of y'all, depending on where you're coming at, uh, coming from within the state of Missouri. Also here on the screen, you'll see my contact information. Again, I do work with Missouri students directly, so feel free to snap a picture of that and shoot me an email anytime. What is great whenever you're looking at this map of where our students are coming from is you'll notice, again, vast majority of our students are coming from all over the country. You'll notice some of our larger states aren't necessarily right next door to us here in Tennessee. Places like Florida, Illinois, Missouri, California, Texas, all throughout New England. So know that if you come to Belmont, you're going to be surrounded by people from all over the place. Now, for those of y'all that haven't had the opportunity to come and visit our campus before, this picture will show you kind of an aerial shot, an aerial view of campus, if you will, to kind of frame uh, where we're at within the city of Nashville. We're right smack dab in the middle of everything. From this kind of bird's eye view of where this picture was taken, downtown Nashville would be to your back. We're located about two miles south of downtown. What's great about our campus is that you are in the middle of the city, but at the same time, our campus feels kind of like its own little world. 
As you look at this picture, you'll notice there aren't any big city streets that are running through the middle of campus whatsoever. So yes, you're in the middle of a city, but again, you kind of feel like you're in your own little bubble whenever you're on our campus. This is a picture of everything as far as campus goes. So we are very compact as far as our campus community goes. It takes about 12, 15 minutes max to get from one corner of campus all the way to the other corner of campus. So an easy campus to get to know. The way that our housing is set up is all of our freshmen live right in the very middle of campus. If you see that little grove of trees kind of on the right hand side, just to the left of it, you'll see a handful of brick buildings all right on top of each other. That's essentially where all of our freshman students will live. So again, the idea is you're just right next door to anyone that you're getting to know your freshman year. You're super close to where all of your classes are happening at as well. So easy again for you to navigate campus and to get to know the campus itself. Now, like I said, we are in the middle of everything in Nashville, and Nashville is an amazing city to be located in. We're one of the fastest growing cities within the country. On average, about 100 people move to the greater Nashville area every single day. So for us, we want to leverage that for our students by making sure that you're getting real world experiences in the form of internships, practicums, clinicals, intensives, whatever that is for your field, Again, we want to make sure you're getting some type of tangible experience while you're a student because you're literally surrounded by hundreds, if not thousands, of opportunities. Uh, so you'd be remiss not to take advantage of that while you are a Belmont student. This is a picture of downtown. Again, we're located just two miles south of where this picture was taken. We're nestled in between a couple of great neighborhoods. Hillsboro Village is just to our west. It basically sits between our campus and Vanderbilt University's campus. So because of that, it feels very college towny. There are lots of college students and young professionals that will live in this part of town. Just north of our campus is Music Row. Music Row is the hub of all things revolving around the music industry. So if you're wondering where are record labels, performing rights organizations, studios, live management offices, all of these are located right on Music Row, literally right next door to campus. I just drove down Music Row a couple of hours ago, coming back from work. I drive it every single day to and fro work. So it's a great location within the city. So Nashville's great. It's a fun place for you to live, of course. And we want to make sure you're getting these internships and that you're getting these experiences. But before you can do any of that, first you need to figure out what you want to study as far as your major goes. So let's talk just a little bit about academic life here on our campus. First off here, you'll get kind of a brief overview of all of our different academic colleges and uh, programs across campus. We have just a little over 100 different majors that y'all can choose from in a wide variety of different areas. Obviously, we don't have time to talk through all of the specifics of all of these different programs. So just wanted to highlight our top 10 majors. You'll see those listed here on the screen. Uh, chances are, if you know anything about Belmont, maybe it's because of something revolving around the arts. We have storied programs within the music and entertainment industry specifically. Actually, our largest major on campus is music business. We're consistently ranked as one of the best music business programs in the country. That's because it is a business degree. So at the end of the day, you're taking all of those businessy specific courses, but at the same time, you're getting an understanding of the music industry itself. So you're taking classes like copyright law, you're learning about international music business, you're learning about touring and marketing, all of the facets of the music industry, you're getting that understanding on top of a really solid business base. So again, that's our largest major on campus, more of the behind the scenes work of the music industry. Now, if you say I'm more of the performer on the stage, you'll want to take a look at our school of music and specifically maybe our commercial music program. Commercial music, as you'll see, is our fourth largest major on campus. This is really for students looking to do anything but classical music. So they see themselves having a career as a musician uh, within basically any other genre, rock, pop, country, soul, anything you can think of, that's what commercial music is designed for. Now there's a lot more within kind of the entertainment world that we offer as far as majors go at Belmont. On the screen, you'll see audio engineering technology. That's for students that want to be sound engineers and do recording, if you will. Songwriting, of course, for students wanting to pursue a career in songwriting. 
What's interesting about that major is that it's not a performance-based degree because as you may know, you can be a great songwriter and not be a great performer whatsoever. So because of that, it is uh, within our current College of Entertainment and Music Business, not within our performance-based School of Music. Uh, you'll also see motion pictures is one of our largest majors for students interested in cinema and in film and creative entertainment industries would be for those students that want to learn about the entertainment industry overall not just about the music industry specifically so i've talked a lot about like music and the arts and all of that which is great if you have an interest in that uh, but very much like belmont or very much like nashville's more than music city belmont is a lot more than just music as well only about a third of our students major in something revolving around the arts. Um, now that's a lot of people, obviously, but it's not like it's the majority of students on campus. For example, our nursing majors, our second largest major on campus, it is a direct admit four year BSN program. Psychology, biology, as well as chemistry have been growing for us a lot. Uh, healthcare is huge here in Nashville, so we have a lot of students interested in the health sciences, whether that's nursing or maybe the psychology, biology, chemistry on a pre-med route. We have a great college of business that has some incredible internship opportunities here in town. We have a brand new architecture program that just started up this fall that's a five-year bachelor's of architecture. I was a major within the liberal arts on campus, so I think that's the heart of everything, whether you want to study the social sciences, the humanities, maybe you want to go into education. The long and short of it, there is a lot for you to choose from as far as academic majors go. And we want you to know you have all of these options, but there's also nothing wrong with being an undeclared or undecided student. We will have a lot of students that come to Belmont that are undeclared or undecided. So don't feel that pressure from us to select your major. We just want you to be aware of what your options are. Obviously, we don't have time to go through everything. So I encourage you to take a look at our website to see a list of all of our different majors and programs and certainly be in touch with any questions that you may have about a specific major. Now, I mentioned at the beginning that I'm a graduate of our honors program, so just want to highlight this really quickly for any of y'all that may have an interest in joining this program. Honors is a fantastic option for our students, for those students that are high achievers looking for just a little bit more of a push or a challenge from the academic context side of things, if you will. Some few things that are different about honors, you have an interdisciplinary core curriculum that replaces what we call the bell court or your general education courses. Uh, interdisciplinary means that you see how all of the subjects interweave with one another. So in one course, over the course of the semester, you could be talking about religion and literature and history and art, that's interdisciplinary, how all of these subjects work and interweave with each other. That is how the curriculum is designed for our students. Um, now, within the study abroad program, during the spring semester of your sophomore year, you study abroad with other honor students. This upcoming year, our honor students will be studying abroad at Harlexton College, which is located about an hour north of London by train, as well as at Trinity College, Dublin. So some really cool options for our students. And I think it's such a great part of the program. Little jealous, it was not a part of the program whenever I was an honor student, uh, because a big thing for me was the community and the connection that I was able to make within this program. And I know that only would have deepened and strengthened if I was able to study abroad with these people that had become lifelong friends for myself. Another big part of the honors program is that you complete a senior project. Um, now, this project is something that you should be interested in. We don't want this to be uh, professor's work that you are working on, but really something that's your idea that you really take ownership of. Now, faculty members are here to help you, of course, as you're going through this. And we call this process the research triad because it's over the course of three different semesters. But we want this to connect with your work. I did a more traditional qualitative and quantitative academic thesis maybe for students in the sciences, you want to do a very quantitative research lab-based thesis. But for students in the arts, maybe you want to create a concept album, or maybe you want to do a one-man play. Uh, we had some friends that created a community service-based project that tied into their entrepreneurial interests. So at the end of the day, it's something that you have ownership of, that you are accomplishing during your senior year, the idea is, is when it's time to graduate and go on to grad school, med school, law school, or get a job, whatever that is, you can, in those applications, say, hey, 
here's something that I did within Belmont's honors program, something tangible to show you my interests and uh, my ability, if you will. So definitely encourage you all to keep an open mind to honors if that sounds interesting to you whatsoever. Also for some students, your academic experience may include just studying abroad. I mentioned that honor specific study abroad, but overall the rest of our programs are open to every single student across campus. Regardless of what you study as far as your major goes, you can certainly study abroad. You can study abroad multiple times if you would like to do so. Um, on this slide and on the next one, you'll see pictures of where our students have gone, truly have gone all over the globe. What's become one of the more popular times to study abroad is during the month of May, we offer our Maymester program. So our spring semester here at Belmont ends right at the very end of April, done with exams and everything by then. So summer for us is essentially May 1st through about the third week in August. So this Maymester program is a great opportunity for students to go and study abroad for, again, just the month of May, about three and a half to four weeks, and then come back to the States because you have an internship over the summer, a job over the summer, whatever that is, you can fit studying abroad in to what may be a very busy year or just a very busy summer for yourself. We also have some really cool programs that we call Study Away because they're based here in the States. Uh, these are called our Belmont USA programs. Now our hallmark kind of flagship locations are in New York City and Los Angeles. We usually call these Belmont East or Belmont West. So if you ever hear a student, you're looking at a packet of information and you see Belmont East or Belmont West, just know we're talking about the New York and Los Angeles programs. So the way that these are set up is for the duration of a semester. You live with other Belmont students, you take Belmont classes, but the main purpose of your time there is to have a full-time internship for credit for the duration of that semester. So this is an incredible way that if you see yourself moving to New York or LA after graduation to go have some comfort of Belmont because essentially there's a little slice of Belmont plot down in both of those cities. So you have that comfort, but you're really getting to know the city and you're having these tangible connections through these internships over the duration of a full semester. Um, I'll tell you all, I had many, many friends that were in Belmont East or Belmont West many of which are in jobs today. This is six to eight to 10 years after graduation because of the connections that they made through these programs. So really, really great options for our students. We also have programs in some other locations throughout the US. We offer options in Washington, DC, the Southern part of Oregon, state of Hawaii, as well as a partnership with a Bonnery Music Festival down the road from us in Manchester, Tennessee. So some really cool options for you, whether that's setting abroad or studying away through Belmont USA. We've talked a lot about student or about academic life. Let's now move over to student life on campus. We have a really active campus community. We have just over 160 different student organizations and clubs for you to choose from. We are not a suitcase or commuter campus by any stretch of the imagination. So it is really important to us to make sure that there is stuff going on all the time on campus. Of course, there's a lot to get plugged into here in Nashville, but we never want you to have to leave campus to find something to do. So there's always a lot of activities and a lot of liveness that's really happening on our campus. Again, just over 160 different student clubs and organizations in a wide variety of different areas. Maybe you want to get involved in Greek life, so fraternity or sorority. Maybe you want to get involved in club or in mural sport. Maybe you want to dive into your academic area a little bit more. Like I said earlier, I was a political science major, so I got really involved with our Model United Nations uh, student organization. Here on the screen is a great example of a community service-based organization. On the right-hand side, it's a picture from our St. Jude's Up Till Dawn student organization. They host a huge event at the end of their fundraising year, which usually happens like late January, early February. Uh, where they celebrate all of the funds that they raised for St. Jude's Children's Hospital, which is located three hours west of us in Memphis, Tennessee. This has become a huge thing for the Belmont community, and we've become one of the largest fundraisers uh, for St. Jude's Children's Hospital throughout the country as far as colleges and universities go. Uh, bottom left hand corner is an example of a fun tradition we have here at Belmont. Every single fall, we have something called Fall Follies. So think of this as like a Saturday Night Live meets Belmont. It's a fun kind of sketch variety show. Uh, that is a big thing that all Belmont community members come out to. Students, it's all student run. 
but also you'll see a lot of faculty and staff members that come out to this Fall Folly events that happened every single October. We're also proud to be NCAA Division I Athletics here at Belmont. We participate in the Ohio Valley Conference. All of our outdoor sports are played over in the Rose Park facilities about a mile north of our campus with beautiful views of downtown Nashville, so it's a great place to catch a game. All of our indoor sports are played over in the Curb Event Center Arena. That is on the south side of our campus, home to our men's basketball team, definitely our most popular as far as sports go. Uh, all athletic events are totally free for our students. That Curb Event Center Arena will also hold some uh, special events from time to time. Very common to have some tapings happen there for TV or for film. For example, CMA Country Christmas is filmed there pretty much every year during November. Uh, we're also, most notably, scheduled to host the third and final presidential debate uh, later this month, actually two weeks as of this session, two weeks from today. So uh, we're pretty excited about that coming to our campus. So again, a lot going on here at Belmont. We want to make sure that you're really getting involved. Also want to touch just a couple of minutes on spiritual life here at Belmont. As you may or may not know, we are a Christian institution, but I think it's so important to define what that actually means. Um, as we all know, there are tons of different Christian schools out there, right? And they all do things totally differently. So what does it look specifically for us here at Belmont to be a Christian institution? A couple of things to keep in mind. Number one, we are interdenominational, so we are not affiliated with any specific denomination or church. Uh, we also welcome students of all different faith backgrounds as a part of our campus community every single year. There's really just one main requirement for our students as it relates to a faith on campus. You are required to take two religion courses at some point over the span of your four years. You choose from one of these two different paths listed here on the screen. Path A, I unofficially refer to as the more traditional track, so a study of the Old Testament and New Testament, for example. Path B, there's a little bit more flexibility in those classes that you're taking. Your first one is called Understanding the Bible. It's a kind of historical context class, the Bible. Your second class you choose from about eight to 10 different courses that will rotate out from semester to semester. Uh, some popular classes, just to give you an idea, would include things like Jesus and the Gospel in Film. A lot of friends that took that class. I personally took a course my senior year that would fulfill this requirement titled Spirituality and World Traditions. So what we would do in this class is we would speak about a different world faith for about three or four weeks, and then we would go and visit their temple of worship here in Nashville and speak to people one-on-one. -on -one. And for me, that was an incredible experience to not only learn about these different faith traditions within an academic context, but then have a human personal connection on the other side of things, made for one of my most favorite classes I took as a Belmont student, Again, that would work as a part of that two religion course requirement for all students across campus. Now, aside from that, there are lots of ways that you can get involved as it relates to faith, but this is totally up to you to decide if you get involved, and if so, what does that look like specifically? Now, that could be a, something as simple as attending our chapel service that happens every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday during the 10 o'clock hour. Maybe you want to find a church family here in Nashville get plugged into one of our spiritual development student organizations on campus, go on one of our short-term mission trips, the list goes on and on and on. Just keep in mind, this is not expected or required of our students whatsoever. We just see this as a way that we can provide uh, more opportunities for spiritual growth for our Christian students that are here at Belmont. So I hope that provides a little bit of context of what it means for us to be a Christian institution here at Belmont. I know faith is such a personal thing, so if you have any questions about what this looks like for you specifically, please don't hesitate to reach out to me offline. We can talk a little bit more about it one-on-one uh, -on -one with you. So we've already talked about a lot surrounding life at Belmont. Uh, we talked a little bit about academic life, about student life, and about spiritual life. So let's now kind of transition over and let's talk about uh, getting you to experience your life at Belmont and the application process. So we'll talk admission, scholarship, financial aid, um, and then see what questions you'll have and wrap it up. Um, like I mentioned earlier, there's that Q&A function. So if you're ever thinking of any questions, throw it in there and we'll have plenty of time to get those addressed at the end of the session. Let me start off by saying a couple different things. Uh, number one, please know that I'm here to help you as you're going throughout the admissions process. 
Please don't feel like there's ever a stupid question. That is why I'm here. You've never applied to college before likely. So don't feel like it's a dumb question whatsoever. I'm always here to be a resource for you and to help you as you're going throughout the, the college admissions process. Um, also want to acknowledge that there has been a lot going on this year. Uh, we've seen a lot of changes happening in our world and this has directly affected a lot of students experiences within high school. Uh, and of course, like test scores, for example, a lot has been canceled. So uh, just know that here at Belmont, we acknowledge that there's a lot going on um, and that we really acknowledge and we are working with you throughout this admissions process. And there have been some changes to our process uh, to help accommodate some of this. So let's kind of talk through it. Uh, for any seniors that are here on the call this evening, our application is live. For any underclassmen students, our application always goes live on August 1st of your senior year. So that is the earliest that you can access the application and submit it over to us. There are a couple ways that you can apply to the institution, either online through your BU for you account. That would be the account that you would use if you would ever set up a visit to come to campus or engage with any of our uh, programming that happens at Belmont. So that's your BU for you account, or you can apply through the common application. We have no preference whatsoever on which form you end up using. Just pick one, fill it out, send it in to us, and you're good to go. As you work through the application, you'll see that we ask you for a couple different things. We ask for your resume of activities as well as your essay. So we review all of our applications holistically. That means that we take a look at absolutely everything before making a final admissions decision. So yes, we care about the academic side of things. We'll talk about that in just a second. But we want some context for that. We want to know who you are, what you're involved in, what your interests are, and what your dreams are. We get all of that information through that resume of activities and through that essay. So know that as you're working through that, there are real humans here on the other side of things, the admissions committee, who is reading this because they have a genuine interest in you and want to make sure that Belmont is a really good fit for you, just like you would be a good fit for us as well. We want to make sure that it is mutually beneficial for both of us. So know that we definitely take a look through that. So once you press submit on your application, you're not done just yet. We do have some supplemental items that we need from you in order for your application file to be considered complete. So like I mentioned earlier, let's kind of talk about test scores, like the elephant in the room a little bit, right? So because there have been so many tests that have been canceled or delayed or pushed back or what have you in recent weeks and recent months, we have moved to being test optional for this current academic year. I will note that we are currently just test optional for fall 2021 applicants. Now, of course, that may change within the future, but just want to let any juniors and underclassmen know, again, we are just test optional for fall 2021. Of course, we'll keep our website updated in case that policy does ever change within the future. Um, now, if you're unfamiliar with what test optional means, it truly means you have the option to submit test scores to us. Uh, hear me when I say it is totally fine to apply as a test optional student. If you apply as a test optional student, you are given equal opportunity and consideration for admission and all scholarship purposes. So do not feel any pressure whatsoever from us here at Belmont to have the opportunity to sit for an ACT or SAT and send those scores into us. Now, with all that being said, if you've had that opportunity and you'd like to send in those test scores for your application, you're more than welcome to do so. On your application for admission, you will either note, yes, I'm applying with test scores, or no, I'll be applying as a test optional student to let us know whether to expect to receive those test scores or not. Here on the screen, you'll see some averages for this past year as far as those test scores go. Average ACT was a 24 to a 30, average SAT an 1120 to a 1320 for this past year. I will also note that we do super score on both the ACT and SAT for all admission and scholarship purposes. So if you apply with test scores, again, we will use that super score when you're being evaluated for anything within the admission or scholarship world here at Belmont. So that's test scores. Now there are two other things that we need. Your official high school transcript, average GPA this past year was about a 3.7 or so. We also need your school counselor letter of recommendation. That is the only recommendation that we require for your application file to be considered complete. Now you're welcome to send in additional recommendations if you'd like to do so, whether that's from a teacher or for whoever you'd like for that to come from. 
We just need to make sure if you're a traditional high school student, at least one is coming from your counselor specifically. If there are any homeschooled students that are on the call this evening, uh, we would just need a letter to come from anyone outside of the family in lieu of this counselor recommendation that could come from a coach, a spiritual mentor, outside teacher, whatever, whatever you have um, is totally fine with us as long as it is someone from outside of the family. So test scores if you're submitting them, transcript and counselor recommendation. Once we receive all of that, your file is considered complete. We'll take it over to our admissions committee to have them review it and send you an admissions decision as quickly as possible. A couple of things to know about our review process. I mentioned earlier, we have that holistic review. So we take a look at absolutely everything before making a final admissions decision. Also wanna let you know that we review all of our applications on a rolling admissions uh, timeline. That means that you can apply at any point within the cycle, within the academic year, and you're given equal opportunity for admission. It also means that we send out our decisions on a rolling basis. So once your application file is complete, you can expect to receive an admissions decision within about one to two weeks, regardless of whenever you apply. So we do try to get that information over to you as quickly as possible. Now we also review all of our applications on a regular decision timeline. So we do not have early action or early decision, which will be phrases that you hear of at some other institutions. What regular decision means, if you're unfamiliar with it, is if you are admitted to Belmont, that is a non-binding offer of admission, and you have until May 1st to let us know if you'll be coming to Belmont or attending elsewhere. May 1st is known in the admissions world as the National Candidate Reply Date, a date, very common date that you will hear of at many other, excuse me, many other colleges and universities um, all over the country. If you choose to come to Belmont, you indicate that by submitting a $250 non-refundable enrollment deposit. And at that point, we send you information about housing, orientation, all of those incoming freshman student things happen at that point. But again, you have until May 1st to make that final decision. We only want you to submit that deposit whenever you are a million percent certain that you'll be attending Belmont for that upcoming fall. So feel no pressure from us to submit that at any point prior to that May 1st deadline. Also wanted to mention within the admissions world before we go over to scholarships, what you're seeing on the screen. If you have an interest in any of our programs within the College of Music and Performing Arts or in our songwriting major, all of those programs require either an audition or a portfolio to be admitted into their respective programs. Just select that major on your application whenever you apply. And as long as it's selected, we will automatically send you information after the receipt of your application, usually within about 24 hours with um, information about how to submit the audition, how to sign up for it, what's expected within the audition, what you need to prepare, all of that type of stuff will be included. Again, for any of our programs within the College of Music and Performing Arts or our songwriting major, just select that on your application and we'll be in touch about next steps that you'll need to take care of. So that's the admissions process. Now let's move over to scholarships. Um, there's one really big thing for you to keep in mind. We try to simplify this process for you as much as possible. Whenever you apply for admission, you are automatically considered for any and all merit-based scholarships. So again, just by applying to Belmont, you are automatically considered for everything that is listed here on the screen. With that being said, I think it's best to think about merit scholarships kind of in these separate sections, how I have them listed up here. So first off, let's talk about your general academic merit scholarships. Those are on the left-hand side. Those range from three to $10,000. If you're applying with test scores, we would encourage you to be at or above these averages you see in the bottom left-hand corner. That's a 27 ACT or a 1220 SAT and a 3.7 GPA. Now, if you are applying as a test optional student, we would still like for you to be at or above that average GPA of about a 3.7, but we'll start looking at additional parts of your application. That resume of activity, as I mentioned earlier, we'll take a look at that to see your involvement and any demonstrated leadership that you've accomplished during high school. We'll take a look at your transcript a little bit closer. So we'll look at your cumulative GPA. We'll also look at your academic core GPA, perhaps. We also may look at the rigor of your curriculum within the context of what is offered at your respective high school. So a lot of different uh, pieces will really come into play for those test optional students. 
making it a little bit more of a holistic review for, again, these test optional applicants. Again, automatically considered for these just by applying, you will hear notifications about these general academic merit scholarships, usually within about three weeks of receiving your admissions decision. So just keep in mind, seniors specifically, admission and scholarship come at separate times, but pretty close to each other in the grand scheme of things overall. Now let's talk about what's on the right hand side. First off, our departmental scholarships. Now these would be scholarships offered by specific major, specific academic programs on campus and a handful of different areas. This would include our College of Theology and Christian Ministry, our College of Health Sciences and Nursing, our Jack C. Massey College of Business, as well as our uh, Department of Music and Theater. So if you're applying into any of those majors, there may be some departmental scholarships that you could be eligible for. Just be in touch with me later on if you have an interest in one of those majors. You're automatically considered for those just by applying, and they do have that December 1 deadline, as you can see listed here on the screen. I'll spend a little bit more time talking about our named scholarships. Our named scholarships are essentially anything above the $10,000 threshold. So these are incredibly competitive awards. Typically, the top 2% of our entire applicant pool would end up receiving one of these top awards to the university. This could include our Faculty Scholar Award, traditionally given out at the $15,000 level, usually to about 200 to 225 incoming students uh, get that invitation. This could also include our uh, Archer Presidential Scholarship. The Archer Presidential Scholarship is the whole kit and caboodle, so it's tuition, room and board fees, absolutely everything for a full year, traditionally given out to five students. So again, very competitive awards. Typically, the top 2% of our entire applicant pool will end up receiving one of these top awards. So again, you're automatically considered for these. Nothing additional that you have to worry about doing. We do have a December 1 deadline for these scholarships. So if you hear that and you'd like to be considered for these awards, just have everything into us by that December 1 date and you will be automatically considered. If you are selected for one of these top named scholarships, you would be notified by usually middle to late January of your senior year just to kind of give you an idea of timeline there. So again, biggest thing to keep in mind, you are automatically considered for any and all merit-based scholarships just by applying to the institution. Let's talk finally about need-based aid. Then I want to mention a little bit about visits and see if there are any questions for you all. So if you have anything that's on your brain, just type it into that Q&A box and we can get it answered in just a couple of moments before we wrap things up this evening. So need-based aid, this all goes through the FAFSA process. If you're unfamiliar with the FAFSA, that stands for the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. A lot of people understand the FAFSA as your application for any federal aid. What you may not realize though is that the FAFSA serves as your application for any type of need-based aid from us here at Belmont as well. So if you're looking to be considered for any type of need-based aid from Belmont specifically, you'll want to have the FAFSA submitted to us. FAFSA is live for current seniors, always goes live on October 1st of your senior year. Our priority deadline is December 1st of your senior year. So let's do a little hypothetical. Let's say that it's your senior year. At some point during the fall semester, you apply to Belmont and you've been accepted. Check. Congratulations. Uh, you submitted your FAFSA to us by December 1st. So come around the holiday season, around Christmas, New Year's, you should receive a financial aid package from Belmont. It will come to you in the mail. It will literally itemize out anything and everything you would qualify for from Belmont as far as financial aid goes. So if you're wondering, when would I know that final number, quote unquote, so to speak, that's when you would expect to receive it again within that financial aid package around the holiday season if you have everything into us in a timely manner. Now, I know that that sounds like a lot, but really, all it is for our process for admission scholarship aid is the application, supplemental items, and the FAFSA, and you've done everything you need to do for admission, scholarship, and financial aid. So we try to, again, simplify that process as much as possible. One last thing that I will mention for you all, or a couple of things. Number one, you'll see uh, kind of our social media contact here on the screen. Please engage with us, uh, especially with our Bruin recruiters. They are our students that help us and volunteer in the Office of Admissions, really giving you a glimpse of what it's like to be a Belmont student today. Um, 
while you do that, hopefully connect with us online. Let me tell you about visits that we are offering. So we are open for in-person visits uh, currently um, on a Monday through Saturday basis. Of course, depends on the day. We have certain capacities that we are keeping things at. So we do have some days that are filling up rather quickly, but we do have visits open throughout the rest of the semester. Just go online to belmont.edu slash visit and you can schedule that visit. Uh, depending on what you're looking to do, we have a variety of different options. You can always attend an admissions information session led by myself or one of my colleagues in the Office of Admissions, a campus tour led by one of our student tour guides. And if you choose one of our specific visit options, either in the morning or afternoon, you could even meet with our residence life team to learn a little bit more about residence halls through a presentation format and then learn a little bit more about our academic colleges and meet with a faculty or staff member from that area to learn about curriculum, job placement, um, internships, all of that type of stuff. So again, in-person visits available all throughout the rest of the fall, uh, Monday through Saturday, just at belmont.edu slash visit. We also offer, of course, virtual visits, uh, things kind of similar to what we're doing this evening, but you can uh, connect with a student uh, and see a, a campus tour led by one of our current students virtually. Again, that's all at that same website, belmont.edu slash visit. Um, I know we have just a couple of minutes before we have to wrap up this evening. So if you do have any questions, please feel free to throw those in the chat. Uh, while you hopefully think about some of those, I'm going to go ahead and throw up my contact information again, just so that you can uh, hopefully take a little picture of that and be in touch with any questions that you may have. Again, my name is John Paul Murray and I am your admissions counselor. So please feel free to let me know any questions that you all have. I hope that this was helpful for you as you get to know Belmont a little bit more and Look forward to answering any of your questions and connecting with you a little bit more later on. And thank you so much for joining us this evening. Go ahead and share my screen to the closing slide. There we go. Uh, thank you for joining us this evening. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey and we'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. In about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recordings as well as all of the other session recordings at moacac.org. Thank you everyone and have a great evening.